What's up, everybody? It's Wednesday, October 14th. And uh, today, uh, for our basics, we're going to go over the top neon belly. Uh, last few days, we're doing bottom stuff and uh, <clears throat> understanding of uh, how to move and escape in those situations. So today, we're going to be the aggressor. We're going to be the guy on top. And we're going to uh, go over some theories and ideas and then uh, a couple of different moves and um, and uh, submissions, possibilities from those positions and their defenses, uh, specifically the darts and a choke from uh, across, kind of a cross collar choke from there as well. Okay, all right. So I got Bob here and he's on his back just like he normally is, thankfully. This, today I don't have to have him on the, on the top, which, is, which has been kind of frustrating. <clears throat> so I'll have him on the bottom today. And uh, so when you're top knee on belly, there are a couple of ways that you can grab. Um, there are some good chokes you can set up from a slightly loose collar variation here. Um, there are, so you can grab collar and you can grab belt. You could grab sleeve and collar. Um, you can grab the head is another good one. Um, head and arm to pull, all right? Um, so really, but it really depends on what you, what kind of game you're wanting to play and how you're wanting to, uh, uh, to do this. If you're a, so, you know, if you're a choker, someone who likes to choke, um, you know, making sure you got a hold of the lapel uh, when you go into these moves is good. Um, if you uh, um, are um, wanting to pass an amount, um, or um, open your opponent up, like if he's really tight, a lot of times your opponent can be really tight on the bottom. Um, there are some good moves from there. Um, so for what I like to do, uh, one, one, one way I like to use um, neon belly is actually to get to uh, the mount position. So uh, super easy to do, really. Now remember, if, you're, if your opponent is doing what they should be doing, then this foot will be um, up high like this, and then this foot will be up against you like this. So when I'm down inside control, basically this, this should be right up against my body um, until they're ready to turn and hip in, okay? Now, <clears throat> if they don't have this, if they're just here, they're basically asking to get uh, mounted because if I'm here like this, and I want to go to mount, all I have to do is reach over and grab the pants, push the pants down, and swing the leg over, right? Uh, but there are a lot of guys who are really good about um, catching that foot when you come over. So some people, they have really good hips, and even when you grab here to push, uh, they can drive with these hips the, the, the other side. And turn over and so when you go to step over they can catch your leg um, another reason being sometimes you forget sometimes you forget to put the hand down to block and when you do their hips come over and catch your foot and now you're uh, having to try to free that or going to get pushed into um, quarter guard or half guard or whatever so uh, so a foolproof way to get a really good mount position is using the neon belly okay so it works like this, pretty simply. So you're gonna have traditional side control, like so, right? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your knee and just gonna put it on their stomach like this. And see what I've done is I've come forward a little bit I'm putting chest pressure on my opponent, like so, I'm putting shoulder pressure in, and I'm putting, so I'm putting shoulder pressure in here on their face, I'm putting chest pressure. Notice I'm not square with their body. So I'm not like, you know, not like this. Right, I can be like this, but when I'm transitioning them out, I gotta rotate ever so slightly. So if I'm here and I'm squishing, then I lean forward to get that knee up. And I'm not using this knee to come up, I'm using this knee to slide across. And I'm not just gonna slide straight across, I'm not gonna go straight across like that. And that is okay, but that's not the best move when you're doing this knee one. This is a 
By the way, just to, for continuity's sake, this is an earth transition because I'm using my weight and pressure and I'm staying connected, okay? So I'm holding here, I put my knee on belly, right? I'm just on this knee, I'm not even, I'm not even posting here, but I'm just on this knee and I'm gonna slide my knee up to their armpit as high as I can go, right? And once I'm here, once I'm here up high, now I'm up in a high mount. And uh, there, there's lots of good stuff you can do from up here uh, for you, for flexible people, put the, put the feet on the hips. So they try to push down the hips, they're just pushing into themselves. Um, if you really wanna come back and try to attack uh, lower, you, can, you could slide down if you want to, but the higher up you are, the better. And with that arm control already here, when I come up, when I've come across and come to this, now I can, I could even come to the arm triangle, bring this over here, grab that arm like that, and flip this foot up and over and come over to the other side and do an arm triangle on this side. So, um, so what you're trying to do basically, is you're trying to get your knee here in the middle of their belly button and then you're trying to get it from here to here up in their armpit, maybe, maybe down near their lat. But whatever the case is, you're trying to keep it away from them being able to uh, catch it, catch your foot. And even if you put your foot in there a little bit, like you probably saw me do when I did this, even if, <clears throat> even if I'm here and I go the knee up and I start to drive it diagonally across, see how my foot sort of dangles in here? That's okay, because I can either keep sliding it across or uh, I can flip it out like that. I can use this foot to hold it in place, but it's okay if that happens. Well, what you don't want, you don't want your foot up high. If it's down low, that's okay. It requires movement on their part. And if you're keeping that chest contact, they shouldn't have any movement to, to push the knee down and uh, get in return to half guard, okay? So, um, like I said, this is a this is a position. This is a movement you would use if you wanted to go uh, to mount. One of the movements that you would use if you wanted to go to mount. Now, there's another uh, possibility for this movement as well, and that's um, to uh, to kind of set up or attack uh, sort of a a modified neck crank and cause your opponent to. Um, react kind of the way you want them to. Um, this borders on a, a fire move because you're sort of being aggressive about your position. You're not just trying to transition or hold. You're actually trying to inflict pain to get your opponent to do what they want to do. But this is, uh, I would say this is a, still a subset of, it's not really going to be a full finish. It's just going to be very uncomfortable. Okay. And this is how that part, this is how this part works. So if I'm here and I'm inside control, when I go knee on belly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll use my, use my over, over hook and underhook to actually pull my point up, all right? And with the gi on, I don't actually, I can, if, I, if I have trouble with that, I can actually switch to a lapel or a collar grab up here and a behind the arm grab here and actually pull them up the same way. And uh, if you can get the knee a little higher, like here, do the same thing. It's going to be even more effective. All right. And of course, the uh, response you're looking for, so then to put their hand on your knee like this and try to push your knee off as they turn. And when they do, that'll lead to um, something that will, that's the, the, the end part, the Darth's choke and other potential chokes as well, as I'll show you what can happen if you try to dar somebody in a gi, okay? Um, so that is our first movement, our first transition. For somebody who wants to go to the mount and they're just having trouble, they're worried if they trip that their leg over, they're gonna, uh, and they wanna stay tight on their upper body. This works real well for real um, compactly flexible people to be able to, to do this in a mounted position, get that over under, just hold on to it. As the bottom guy's struggling, put that knee on there, you know, even if the guy kind of turns into you like this, 
then you can push that knee into their belly and push it across, start pushing them across, and that'll pin them down. So like if I'm here, right, and this guy starts to turn into me to try to get away, I can just go right up there like that and pin him till I'm ready to, to do what I want to do, okay? So all that comes from that, the head and arm control and the pin, okay? Um, so the, uh, if, if they respond the way you want them to, all right? So we do head and arm and they respond because they don't know, you know, to stay calm or they know to stay calm, but they're going to push the knee out because they're not worried about it. Uh, then we have our move set, which can, which is, uh, uh, um, it's, it is a, it is a submission. Uh, it is the dar stroke. It is a submission for that, <clears throat> but it does flow from this position. Okay, so in this case, this is our water technique. So person tries to push your knee off, and you're going to uh, flow with him. And you could say that there are three possible submissions, two of which we went over yesterday: the spinning, the half spin kimura, and the full spin armbar, or the 180 armbar, I should say. And then now we're going to talk about uh, the dars. And so the dars really comes when you couldn't get that underneath. So yesterday, um, when we were talking about potential submissions from here, uh, and being fluid with, with our opponent's movements. Um, so we're up in neon belly, you know, maybe we've got the belt, maybe we've got the sleeve or whatever. Your opponent goes to push off you, all right? Now there are two things your opponent's gonna do with their arm. Either their elbow's gonna be high, you're gonna be able to get this hand inside to do your, you know, to hold. So when he, so the elbow's high, remember he pushes the knee down, you slide it off, he's turned sideways like this. So this arm comes underneath. Now you've got this. So I'm holding my opponent here and I can do my spinning stuff. I can either step to just the, behind the head like this and then come down, or I can swivel first, come all the way around and then step up <clears throat> to my spinning arm bar. And that was yesterday's. So if you wanna know more about that, watch yesterday's video. Um, but from here, Right, that's what we got. Now, the other option would be if your opponent comes to, to push your knee off. So we're here, and he comes to push your knee off, boom, and he keeps his elbow tight. All right, so <clears throat> to sort of give you more of a humanized visualization of it, this is how it works. So if I'm here, he puts his knee here. So when I go to turn, I keep my elbow tight like this to push his knee off, and now his knee's down here, right? If I push his knee off, my hand's up here, then it's easy to catch. So if I'm up here like this, and I start to push elbows up, you can reach around, reach underneath, and grab that. If I'm here, and I push, there's nothing to grab underneath, right? And so if somebody tries to do something, I could even take this hand and grab the sleeve there, and then uh, then I'm good and I can start to sit up, right? That's a little bit of an intermediate technique. So for the sake of our uh, flat video today, um, again, for this move, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna keep my elbow tight and I'm gonna push, all right? So I'm gonna push the knee down like that, okay? So when that happens, I can't get under, but I can get over. I can actually get over the arm, all right? So that's what leads into our darts choke. And this isn't the only time we can do this. Like if I'm in side control, and this is from the bottom or the top side, uh, the side control series from a couple weeks ago or last week and the week before. If I make my frame and I bump away and I make my space and then I'm able to bridge and get this arm inside, sometimes I wanna go, I wanna go down to the leg. When I go down to the leg, that's another one of those instances where they can come underneath and go for this darts choke, right? If I'm on my side like this, there are a few opportunities that I've given my opponent because I've extended myself out. So anytime we extend ourselves out, we have to be willing to take the risk of they might choke us, okay? So um, as you practice, you're gonna learn where you can get choked and where you can't. So in this case, it's a fluid movement, staying connected to your opponent uh, and setting up a potential choke and so that's why we call it, that's why it's a uh, water elemental movement, okay? <clears throat> so now <clears throat> when your opponent comes down, all right, I'm trying to get a good angle on this. 
your opponent come when you push you so you so your opponent's pushed you down, right? And he's got it and, and they've and pushed your knee down. So this is a, a quick movement, all right? So it's hard, it's kind of hard to show when somebody's not pushing you down, but the but it's a quick movement. And what you're gonna do is this arm is gonna shoot underneath this arm, and you're gonna drop as far down your arm as you can. You're almost trying to get your shoulder into their armpit when you do this move. Okay. So they push my knee down and I go like this. All right. See how my shoulder is almost in his armpit and his arm is here. Right. And my arm is here. And so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up reaching over and I'm going to be grabbing my hand with my other hand. All right. So again, if they're on their side, Come on, Bob, work with me. All right, on their side, and I shoot this down. I'm actually going to grab their head at the same time, and I'm going to pull it in like this. All right, now, this is the hand position that you start with in the darts. Okay, it's this hand underneath like this. You see I'm basically like head to shoulder on this. That's my best position. All right, and he... And I'm going to go my palm to palm. So notice this hand, it's not down, it's up, or it's kind of sideways. And then I'm going to go palm to palm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to try to keep this locked in like this. All right. Now, finishing the darts is a whole another uh, ball of wax. For people who have really long and kind of lanky arms, it's really easy. You just get here. You throw it in. Sometimes you can just go right to it. So it's a figure four on your on You grab your bicep, grab your bicep, grab their uh, tri trap you can back here, their lat back here. And then you squeeze back, you squeeze, and you use your head, use your chest to push their arm down. And then you squeeze like you would a regular triangle choke or whatever. Okay. That's how you uh, finish the, the darts choke. Okay. <clears throat> Now, the problems you, a couple of problems you run into, just to troubleshoot that side of things, is first thing is they're given a lot of backwards pressure. So when I get darts choked, right, and you're here and you're and that arm comes through, you're not just gonna go, okay, choke me. You know, this this is not your response. Your response is to try to extend back. All right, try to get this extension going. And that's one thing, all right. I'll go into a couple others when we get there. But this is one thing you're going to have to fight against if you're doing the dart stroke, is that backwards press, right? So when they do that, you need to find a way to take that space away. And so that's part of what the back of the hand is for. So if I'm here and I'm here like this, right? I'm trying to set up that dart stroke and I'm here, right? I'm trying to push with the back of my arm into his neck to push it down. Now, uh, even then, when you got guys like me who have big heads, and if you got small arms, this might not always work. So there's a little trick that you can do. Instead of trying to pull the head this way toward me, because they're trying to flex this way, right? What you're gonna do is you're actually going to grab the underside of the head like this and lift it up. When you lift it up, then you can get even deeper and then you should be able to get your move. So pushing back your head is not the ultimate way to defend against the dart stroke, all right? Now, the second thing that can happen when you're trying to set up the dart stroke is the guy can come up to, um, uh, to his knees, all right? If a guy is really good, he'll just drive, 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 boom, come up to his knees. But you still have that Darce uh, hand configuration. And to get somebody on their knee or from their knees, um, this actually will work real well in turtle. And it'll be one of the moves that we talk about in turtle. So when you're in turtle, um, just to give you a preview, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the, what, you know, the, um, so if I'm on his left and it's my right, my right hand goes underneath like this, my left hand goes over just like I was before. Now this time, 
I'm going to use the blade of my hand to chop down on his head to push his head down to get him to flip over. Okay, so it's like this get the hand inside, use the blade, and then drive and push him over. Now I can finish setting up the dart stroke from there. Okay, that's one of the things we'll cover a little bit more uh, when we get to uh, turbo. But it is a response to this. So if you're trying to get the dart stroke, they'll go to their knees and um, and uh, and go to turbo. Okay. Second hand. So uh, those are the two things you have to deal with if you were taking the dart stroke. What's the defense? All right, what's the defense? Well, both those ways that I just showed you are kind of like what you should be initially working with. But really what you want to do, if you're the bottom guy, is you want to go underneath the arm like an underhook. All right, if you go down to the leg, right? So if I'm here and this guy just reaches for my leg, I'm going to just shoot. Sorry, you can't see that. <laughs> so if I'm here, the guy goes for my leg, I'm just going to shoot my leg back, right? And I'm going to take that and I'm actually going to push down on it more. And I'm actually going to be able to, if I have this control, I'm going to be able to get even deeper into my control. So that's not good. But if instead you go to the body, there isn't really anything I can do about that. I can try to push down on you, but as long as you're outside my body, as long as you're wrapped around my body, I'm trying to push your arm into my body. And that's not going to work. Okay, that's not going to be how you finish. Now, once you get there, the trick is to go to your back. Okay, it's it's uh, it's too bad you have to go back to the original position, but it's really the only way. Or one of the things I like to do, if I can, is I actually like to try to meet uh, the hand as it comes through. So if I know Darcy's coming, so if I'm here and he's me on belly. And I go to push and he goes to Darce, right? This bottom hand right here, I'm actually gonna try to like stop their hand from coming through, right? I'm gonna block it here like this. Like this is a good way to do this. You might be out here, but if you know somebody, if you feel like this knee on belly is gonna move toward Darce, it's a good opportunity for you to push the knee off and come here and that'll keep their hand from coming through or at least you can meet it. Um, another thing I like to do is when they come down, I try to clamp this a little bit. So they're trying to fight through this and they'll get there, but then I'll use this hand to grab their hand and now they can't go anywhere. So I'm like trying to hold their hand essentially to keep them from going anywhere. And since they're here, now I can sit up and I have control of one of their posts. You know, if you have that table mentality about, uh, about takedowns, if you're, on your, if you're on all fours and I want to take you down, I got to take away a post, a, a, a table leg, and I gotta drive you in that direction in order to get you to, to go. So if I've got this post here and I'm holding on to it and I've got it tight because you've got it underneath my arm here like this, then I can and, or, or, and I can grab your wrist. That's another, that's another thing I like to do. I like to grab just the base of the wrist right here when the guy's coming through. So this is usually the first way. And then once I'm here, uh, I could try to fight this, and if I can fight this and get my hand inside and keep him from doing that, that's great. And then if I can get here, that's even better because now, now everything's over here. Now all of his body is over here, and I can come up to my knees, and I can you know, keep my head high, come up to my knees, and his hand's here, and I can actually think and drive his hand down like that, and then I can come over to the top of the body. Okay? So that's, uh, that's the defense to that. Now... <clears throat> Um, the other thing you might run into in that situation is actually, instead of a Dars choke, you could get a lapel choke, all right? So um, this is a little unorthodox, but like sometimes uh, maybe your opponent's lapel is open over here. Maybe it's pulled open and it's over here. And when you drop down to that Dars, your hand gets caught in their lapel. Well, now you can't go any farther. Right? So if I go down and my hand gets caught in their lapel, do I give up? No, I don't give up. I'm going to go into that lapel and I'm going to take that, right? And they're going to be um, here, right? Trying to go like this. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of paper cutter choke. I'm gonna grab the top of the gi like this and I'm gonna pull and then I can actually push down and go for that uh, paper cutter choke. So I'm here, just like that. Okay, that's how that, it's a pretty, uh, it really um, only works if you accidentally catch that lapel, right? If you don't catch that lapel, you're going for the Dars choke, or at least Dars control. And if you do catch that lapel, when you're coming down, so, so, you know, my knee was up here like this. He goes to, you know, I've got, you know, whatever controls I wanted. Maybe I did, uh, maybe I did arm belt and he goes to push. So he pushes, boom, I go down. Oh no, my hand's inside his lapel. All right, his arm's here like this. So I'm gonna reach and grab his lapel like this and I'm gonna turn, keep that arm there and I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna paper cut. And remember to paper cut correctly, this hand pulls him up this way and then this hand comes down like those old paper cutters from when we were in school. Uh, they still have them, but you probably don't ever see them unless you work at, school, work at a school or, or go to a school. So, but that's exactly how they work there. Up here, they come down just like that, okay? So this works real well in the lapel. You don't have to give it up. You go for this Dars, you don't have to give that up uh, because again, you've got this one in here and then all you have to do is turn and come around. So I'll show you one more time. So we're here, we've been fighting for a while. I go knee on belly, got here and here. He has like my knee there, so he pushes, bam. Oh no, I got it in here, so I'm here. I'm gonna grab, ideally the collar. If I get, if I get um, bacon, that's okay too, but the collar is, in my opinion, the collar is the best. And if you don't go deep either, it works better because then you have more slack over on this side. And then you can take that slack out when you're, when you're in and push down, come down and pull and choke that way. And you're really just trying to get this elbow to the mat and pull that lapel at the same time. You're really trying to get that together like that. And the deeper on this side you are, the better it is because it's your forearm that's wanting to choke the other side. Uh, not necessarily the gi. So, <clears throat> uh, so those are your those are your two. And now, um, defending against the paper cutter choke that is from that position is kind of tricky because normally, if we were doing a regular paper cutter choke like we showed before, this hand would be here. If I reach to grab this lapel like this, all you got to do is put your hand to your head to block uh, the arm coming over because the arm has to come. The arm's here, it has to come over here. So how do we stop the arm from coming over? We put our hand on our head like this. Now I can't get that arm up and over to finish this choke. All right. And uh, um, sometimes, sometimes people do it the other way. Sometimes people go in here, they get this, they do this first. And then once we're here, they create this pressure, but not finish it. Then they get this slack out, then they can come down into the choke. So for ours, it's sort of, uh, it's sort of like that, but it's not, but it's the opposite. So, um, so yeah, so we've turned inside like this. So we have attack one, Dars, all right? And then attack two, I go to go in, their lapel's pretty loose, so I wanna aim for that neck. Oh, dang it, my hand went inside, all right. So my hand goes inside, I'm gonna uh, ideally reach back behind like this, then I'm gonna drive into them, pulling this lapel down, and then coming across with a paper cutter choke. <clears throat> now remember, the, uh, the whole way to choke somebody with a paper cutter choke is with your forearm. So if you can uh, keep them from coming down on you with their forearm, uh, that would be the ideal way to do this. And so um, the couple, couple things you have to think of if somebody does attempt a paper cutter choke on you and you it's, it's already pretty far, far gone and you, need to, and you want to get out of it. The first thing I would do is turn my head away, uh, turn my head towards, okay? So, so if I'm here, right, and someone tries to paper cut choke me, I need to get their arm off of my head. 
But if their arm's below my chin level and I try to like peel this off and up, that's not gonna happen because my chin is uh, creating a, a pressure against. So if I'm here and I'm, and they're going to paper cut or choke me and I push, I'm pushing into my own jaw. So it's futile, right? So what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to uh, start by sort of trying to block the arm, all right? So one way that you could do that is you could put your hand, you can grab their elbow right here. So remember the paper, the arm goes down like this uh, to paper cut across um, with the elbow this way. So if I can grab that elbow and lift it up, uh, that's gonna be my first thing. My second thing is like I said, I wanna turn my head. So I'm gonna turn my head. Now what happens? Where's my jaw? It's to the side now. Even if he does choke me, everything said incorrectly like this, and he does choke me, my jaw's not in the way. So now I should be able to lift his arm up and get it off my, at least push it off my, uh, my arteries and get it maybe up onto my face. And then they're trying to paper cut across my face. Not the most comfortable scenario, but if I got, like I said, if I got that far, I've already kind of messed up, right? So again, if I can get this off my face, then once I'm, once I'm over, right, over the head here, okay, then I should be able to keep that away from me. I should be able to make this block. Now, uh, now then, if we do that, your arms are way up here, and now you've got a couple other things to worry about, and, uh, and it definitely could be a way to distract you so that you can get mounted or maybe attack this Americana or whatever. But generally speaking, uh, you know, we're worried about the submission at the moment. If you get too far, if someone grabs your lapel like this, right, somebody's pulling it tight, it may not be instinctual for you to just kind of defend this area, right? So if somebody reaches under and grabs, like you turn and they grab, get your lapel, all right, it's maybe not instinctual to go here and block the hand, but that definitely should be one of your go-to moves. It's a simple bring my hand up to block both the dars and the lapel grab or the over lapel grab here. And, if, and in fact, if your hand's here and somebody grabs the lapel, look where my arm is. They're not going to be able to paper cut or choke me here. So, so defending your neck, getting your hands inside there deep to defend that move, that move, that paper cutter, is a real important uh, part to this uh, this particular defense. And I mean, it's pretty common throughout all the defenses, whether it be a cross collar choke or whatever, to try to brace against an arm. Okay, some arms, if you're strong enough and you get that in there, you get that in there and you pull, it's not gonna, it's, it doesn't matter, right? But if you can get, if you can protect one side uh, is always better than the other. One side, if you protect it, you're not gonna get the same torque on it. You're not gonna get the same choke. You may get like a half choke and be uncomfortable, but you're not gonna get the same choke. If you protect on the other side, a lot of times people can just sort of uh, push through that. So like if I tried to like, block this lapel here, but you've got this side, uh, I could still pull this lapel down and then still get my arm across your neck and potentially still paper cut or choke you. And it may be easier because my hand's here, so I might be able to get this hand pushed down in my artery using my forearm in the process. So there's always going to be a good defensive hand and a bad defensive hand. And uh, the more choke, the more times you get choked, the uh, more times you realize which hand is which for, the, for each individual choke and then you're able to defend uh, better. Or you can get lucky and be like me and have no real neck to speak of to, uh, to get choked. So. All right, well, that is uh, all I wanted to go over for today. Uh, as I said before, if you have any questions, please just uh, let me know um, in the comments and I will answer them the best I can. Um, you can also ask me in person if you see me at the gym. And I uh, uh, hope you guys have a good, uh, you know, rest of your day. And uh, thank you for watching.